What's going on guys? Coach Chaz here, bringing you another nutrition video uh, brought to you by our friends over at FundsForYourLife.com. Today's going to be about the nutrition label and how the heck do you read it? Um, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about this stuff, so I figured I'd make a quick video. Um, but I never make quick videos because I ramble on way too much. So, sit down, grab some healthy food, and enjoy. We're going to dive right into this. Um, here's what a nutrition label looks like, you guys all know. It's on every boxed item. Um, how the heck do you read this? So there's basically three main parts. Number one is going to be the ingredient list. Now, the first three or four ingredients are going to be what that entire product uh, primarily consists of. All the other stuff is going to be in very small quantities, so you guys want to pay attention to what the first ingredients are. I've got a good old box of hamburger helper that we've had up in the cupboard for probably about a year. Um, I don't remember the last time I had this stuff, um, but I know that when I did eat this kind of crap a lot, I would eat the entire box easily. Uh, you throw in what, a pound of beef with this thing? Yeah, a pound of ground beef, uh, two and a quarter cups of milk. Uh, there's a lot of calories <laughs> when you're eating a whole box of this stuff. So I'm going to dive right into this. Number one is going to be the ingredient list. So if you look at this, it's going to be enriched uh, pasta, parentheses, wheat flour, niacin, uh, ferrous sulfate, thiamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, uh, folic acid, corn starch, salt, enriched flour, blah, 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 blah. The list is ridiculous. So you can see it's a lot of just wheat product and sugar and corn starch in this. Um, I can tell you right off the bat, don't eat this crap. Um, there's a reason I haven't eaten it in a while. So when you're looking at your ingredients, always just look at the first ones. Um, that's going to be what this thing is primarily consisting of. So if there, if you see sugar, um, like a lot of your, um, if you go get like fruit roll-ups or any of those uh, junk food items, most of the time it's just going to be sugar, 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 sugar. Always look at the first couple items. Uh, stay away from the sugar, the wheat flour, um, stay away from the cornstarch, um, the enriched flour, that kind of stuff. And uh, you always want to have food sources that if it has a nutrition label on it, you want to stay under five ingredients and you should be able to pronounce them and know what they are if you're going to put it into your body. Your body is a million dollar engine. It is a fine tuned machine. You need actual high quality nutrients to make it run at an optimal level. If you're shoving it full of crap you can't even pronounce, there's no wonder why you may feel sluggish and tired all the time and bloated. <laughs> Might I add that in there? Uh, so you can see this thing, again, has a ton of ingredients. Uh, so obviously this would be a big no-no. Uh, so talking about ingredients, I'm gonna pull up Adam's Peanut Butter. This is my favorite brand of peanut butter because if you look at the ingredients, as one ingredient, peanuts. If you look at a lot of other stuff like uh, Jiffy, and I can't think of what the other brands are right now, but those top store brands, uh, a lot of times they're going to have added salt, added sugar, uh, hydrogenated oils. Stay away from that crap, guys. The fewer the ingredients, the better it's going to be for you. Let's take this for example. Can you guess what the ingredient is in, in an apple? There's no nutrition label needed. It's an apple. It's one ingredient. That's it. Um, if you want to pull up on my fitness pal the sugar content and all that stuff, go for it. But more importantly than what you see with the sugar and the calories and protein, all that stuff up here, the most important part about a nutrition label is just the ingredients. If it's one ingredient, it, I mean, really doesn't matter what else is in it. It's a whole food. Same thing with some leftover chicken I had here from last night. One ingredient, chicken, that's it. Nothing else, apple, chicken, fruits, nuts, veggies, meats. Uh, those are your whole foods that are just one ingredient each. So that's my little take on the ingredient portion. Um, same thing if you're picking up something like, I'm a big fan of frozen berries. Um, there are some brands that you do want to watch for these because they will add sugar into them. Uh, if you look at the back of this, ingredients, strawberries, blackberries, red raspberries, 
and blueberries. Nothing else. That's it. This is okay in my book. Uh, so diving into number two. So number one is the ingredients. Number two that you should look at is up here. Serving size. This is where a lot of people make the mistake of picking up a box. Maybe they pick up this and say, you know what, I'm going to make this for dinner. They look right here at the calories as prepared. So after you add in your milk and everything, 320 calories. So about 300 calories for uh, a lot of people would think, oh, there's 300 calories in this. Not quite. This is why number two on my list of what to look for is the serving size and how many servings are in this. Uh, because you can see calories, about 300 calories as prepared for one serving, which is half a cup. Um, or I'm sorry, one cup prepared, half a cup if it's just dry. So after you make this entire box, if you take one cup out of there, there's about 300 calories. Now you have to look at the fact that there are five servings in this thing. So you're looking at about 1,500 calories in this one box if you prepared it with uh, your pound of lean ground beef, half a cup of water, and two and a quarter cups of milk. 1,500 calories. That's something a lot of people make mistakes on when they're looking at nutrition labels because they automatically look straight at the calories and go, oh, that's not that bad. Perfect example is if you take a 20 ounce bottle of Pepsi, and I don't have one here with me because I keep that crap out of the house, um, but I just now looked it up. There are about 100 calories per serving of Pepsi. Um, now in your standard 20 ounce bottle, the stuff you buy at the store, um, you know, when you're just out on the go or whatever, it's easy to look at the back of that bottle, look at the calories and go, oh, 100 calories, that's not that bad. Drink the whole thing, but guess what? There are two and a half servings in that 20 ounce bottle. And a lot of people miss that kind of information. So that's number two to pay attention to. Um, so if you're t you know, going back to your Pepsi, 20 ounce bottle, two and a half servings, that's 250 calories, 69 grams of sugar inside of that one 20 ounce drink. Uh, when you can eat a huge heaping plate of delicious whole foods that's gonna have half that amount of sugar in it. Um, so st obviously stay away from the Pepsi. Uh, but that's just how I wanted to use that Pepsi thing because I know pop is and soda is stuff that's highly addictive. But some people have no idea how much sugar they're actually drinking. Uh, so pay attention, number two, serving sizes. And number three is just gonna be a breakdown of your actual calories, your fats. Uh, stay away from your trans fats. Uh, you have mono and polyunsaturated fats, which are gonna be your better fats for you. Um, but trans fats, that's the man-made stuff. That's, that's the stuff you wanna stay away from, so make sure that's always at zero. Uh, sodium, and each of these, this is why I put it last, number three, because number one, you wanna look at your ingredients, make sure it's a whole food uh, driven product. You wanna make sure that uh, you're paying attention to your serving size, and this stuff, the protein, carbs, fats, all that kind of stuff, that really all just depends on your personal goals and where you are at with your macronutrient intake. Uh, so if you're on a high protein, very low carb diet, obviously you wanna go low carb on this kind of stuff. Now there's 22 grams of carbs per serving in this. Uh, so you multiply that by five, you have over 100 grams of carbs in this whole box and like I said this is if you were like I was a couple years ago where you'd eat this whole thing easy. Um, protein 3 grams, carbs 22, uh, total fat 1 gram. So remember multiply that, those numbers, by how many servings you plan on eating of whatever product it is. And this is just for this thing here. Uh, Adam, Going back to the Adam's peanut butter here. Uh, so a serving size Right, we already know that there's only one ingredient, so step one is done. Step two, serving size is two tablespoons. In this jar, I don't know many people that can eat this whole jar in one sitting, but there's 32 servings in this entire jar at two tablespoons per serving. So in those two tablespoons, you're gonna have 200 calories, 16 grams of fat, uh, and a lot of people would look at that and be like, holy crap, that's a lot of fat, but remember, 
this is going to be your healthy fat. You have uh, saturated, which is 2.5 grams, no trans fats. You have 4.5 grams of polyunsaturated fats, and you have 8 grams of monounsaturated fats. So your polys and your monos, A-OK, -okay. go for those. Um, you're going to have 6 grams of carbs and 7 grams of protein. So if you plan on having 2 tablespoons of this in a shake or something like that, that's, those are the numbers you would know to get. If you're going to have 2 servings, which would be 4 tablespoons, you know that you have to double those numbers. So there you have it, folks. Ingredients, make sure there's underneath five ingredients and make sure there's uh, no sugar, the cornstarch, all that crap. You don't want that to be in your first three to five ingredients. Uh, the fewer the ingredients, the better it's going to be for you, um, especially with the shelf life. The longer the shelf life, the longer your life is going to be. Remember that. Number two is going to be looking at your serving size and make sure you know how many servings you plan on eating. And then number three is just plan accordingly with those uh, nutritional numbers down there. All right, guys, this has been Coach Jazz. I hope you all enjoyed the video, took something out of it. Now you know how to read a nutrition label in three easy steps. Be sure to check out our sponsor, FundsForYourLife.com. Have a great evening and a great Thanksgiving, guys. I will catch you later. Peace out. I can't talk tonight. Coach Jazz Fitness, sponsored by FundsForYourLife.com. Go check those guys out if you have any fundraising needs. It's a crowd... A crowd. Blah, 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 blah. Adam's Peanut Butter. Get some. And we're going to start with America's favorite, Hamburger Helper. This stuff... Uh, shit. <laughs> this will make you bloated as hell.